Hey guys, and welcome to the week one of UPBA season four. Um, we are going up against Dr. Slacken, aka Matt, of the. I think his team name's OK Rilla Boomers. I'm probably completely wrong on that regard. Um, I'm probably going to edit it in over here somewhere. There, there'll be a logo on screen. Um, but here's our matchup, and. Um, I'm very briefly going to go over the matchup and um, jump into a team builder um, before we go into the battle. Um, so Matt has Tapu Koko, Azelf, Victini, Obstagoon, Thievul, Kamoa, Nidoqueen, Corviknight, Jellison and Clawwitzer. Um, and I have Ferromosis, Sincino, Zapdos, Comfey, Magmar, Seismitoad, Glaceon, Tyranitar, Tangela, Registeel, Ditto and Galarian Slowking. Um, right off the bat, I notice that Victini is fucking terrifying. Um, and also, Obstacoon is a big problem for my team. I don't really have a switch into it. Um, obviously, kind of my physically defensive walls being Tangela and Seismitoad. Both of those don't really want to be taking a knockoff. Um, so immediately I'm thinking, well, this game plan is don't let Obstacoon come in and maybe we can win. Um, Fermos is going to be putting in a lot of work from the looks of it. Um, Maybe uh, if he does bring the Victini, I do think it will be Choice Scarf. Um, and if he brings Corviknight, then hopefully it'll be uh, kind of a variant which will be two hit KO'd by a Shockwave. Um, yes, I'll be using his own electric terrain against him um, if he does bring Tapu Koko. Um, and I do think he will bring it because it is a really good bulky pivot this game. Um, so that's kind of the matchup. I'm now going to go ahead and move over to the team builder, so bear with me. Um, so here it is, here's the team, nice and very lack of transition, uh, no flashy transitions this week, uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, so yeah, so we're going to start off the build with the Fermosa. Um I brought Expert Belt with enough speed to outspeed um, Coco, who is speed creeping my Sincino. Um, because you didn't really have any other reason to uh, run any more speed than that, to be honest. Um, I've got U-turn, Ice Beam, uh, Draw on Shockwave, which is kind of perfect coverage for his team. I kind of, I did want to run close combat, but honestly, I didn't really see the point of it. Um, whereas U-turn is much more free against his team than close combat. He's got the Jellicent and he's got the Coco, so to be honest, I wasn't really going to be clicking close combat anyway. Um, um, nine times out of ten, I'm probably going to be clicking U-turn this game, in all honesty. Um, I can see Fermos putting in a lot of work here, especially if he does bring the Corviknight or the Electric Terrain. Um, obviously, Shockwave is going to be boosted by both of those. Um, enough investment to two-hit KO, um, physically defensive Jellicent, and physically defensive uh, Corviknight with Shockwave. Um, Ice Beam as well does a good chunk to Kamoe and uh, Nido Queen. Um, if they are not kind of bulky in that regard, they should. I think it okos after rocks or after a little bit of chip. I can't quite remember the calcs. Um, but yeah, I've, I've got E Belt on there as well for. Um, it's just it. I did want to learn Life Orb because Life Orb Duron has a better chance to oko Victini after rocks than Expert Belt did. But I was like, I don't want to be taking all that chip damage. Um, and I feel like Expert Belt is going to be more useful for me in this game than Life Orb. Um, so yeah, so that's the Fermosa set. Next up we're going to move on to the Slow King. Um, bit of a strange one. Um, I'm bringing Trick Black Sludge this week. Um, mainly because he has got the Jellicent and the Corviknight both to kind of switch into Slow King. If I can cripple either of those, that will be really useful for me. Um, but also if he does decide to swap in the Obstagoon, which is a big problem for me. Um, hopefully I can trick away at Slay Mob. Um, even getting that, you know, top percent on at the end of each turn um, with a black sludge. Um, I do have Rocky Helmet on Toad this week, so if I can just whittle down that Obstagoon to a point where um, either Sincino or Fermosa can just revenge with U-turn, that'll be really helpful for me. Um, so yeah, I, I've got Trick on Sloking this week, which is a little, um, I guess, odd. Um, unconventional, you could say. Um, but I have my reasons for it, and hopefully you know, I'll be able to whittle down um, his team with the Black Sludge. Um, it is mainly to catch the Jellicent, to be honest, because Jellicent is kind of an issue for me this week. Um, despite having both Tita and Zapdos, uh, it's definitely going to be a problem for me. Um, Psyshock, uh, Psy Scored and Sludge Bomb is kind of perfect coverage for his team. 
Um, it was kind of a toss up between Scald and Flamethrower to be honest, but in the end I decided that Scald's going to be more helpful. Um, it's a nice mid ground for his team, um, and obviously Scald burns are really nice. If I could get that on the Corviknight and also trick off the Black Sludge uh, to the Corviknight, then that is kind of my way of dealing with it rather than having Flamethrower. So I thought in the end that Scald is better for his team than Flamethrower, but we'll see. Hopefully that decision doesn't come back to bite me in the ass, but you know. <laughs> um, Eevee'd to, I think this is for non-boosted um, Earthquake and non-boosted Earth Power from Nido Queen um, to live, I think, obviously one of those quite comfortably and then kill it with Psyshock or Scald. Um, I played this game, um, I played this game like last week, I built this team like last week, so to be honest the Eevees are kind of, I don't remember what they were for. It, uh, it may have been that, but I, I think the investment was for mainly to live Earth Bowers from Nido Queen and to live a. I think it was an adamant V create from a Victini if it wasn't banded. Um, I think that's what my EVs were for. Uh, but don't quote me on that because I'm not 100% sure. Um, next up, we have a <laughs> very interesting spread on my Zapdos. Um, this was kind of designed to live. Um, well, mainly it was uh, kind of an offensive pivot. Um, it was designed to hit KO Need a Queen whilst not um, being no code by Ice Beam in return. Um, Hurricane Discharge U turn and Roost. Um, I did want Thunderbolt, but I thought honestly the, the powers may be really good for me, especially if he makes the offense and switch into Obstagoon. If I could paralyze that thing. Um, if you couldn't tell, I'm fucking terrified of it. Um, if I can paralyze that thing, that's going to be so good for me. Um, and even Victini as well, if it was for some reason assault bested or, um, ooh, excuse me, um, yeah, I thought Discharge and the Paralysis in general was going to be really important for me this game. Um, so yeah, that was the Zapdos set. Um, it was kind of there to mainly do things, it was mainly my main reason to kill Corviknight and Jellicent. Um, whilst also kind of switching into them as well. Um, the main thing I am kind of worried about is Toxic on the Zapdos. If I do get Toxic, I am obviously going to be crippled and it's going to limit my switchings to it and stuff like that. Um, so that's definitely something I do need to watch out for this week um, and kind of is my main concern. Uh, next up, we have <sighs> Chuffleberry, Dragon Dance, Tyranitar. Um, if I can set up, this Tyranitar can put in a lot of work. Um, it just depends on kind of... I was really iffy with this set, to be honest. I didn't know if I wanted to bring it. I didn't know if I wanted to bring Ditto instead. Or Comfey instead for the Kamoro. Um, but in the end, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to play an offensive game. Um, he's kind of got a team where I kind of struggled to switch into his offense. Um, so if I kind of got Tita into a position where it can set up, it can do a lot to his team. Um, we've got Stone Edge, Earthquake, Ice Punch, and DD on there. Um, Ice Punch to hit KO's uh, Kamoo. Um, with the Trouble Berry, obviously, I'll be living a close combat or body press um, from full. Um, Stone Edge, Earthquake on there for coverage. I did kind of want Crunch on there for Jellicent, but it got to hit KO by uh, Stone Edge anyway. Um, and I thought, to be honest, if he did bring Jellicent, there's a good chance it'll be Cobra Berry anyway. So, um, so yeah, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I've got I've got Edgequake on there with Ice Punch. It's really good coverage for team. Um, and if it gets a plus one or plus two, then this thing's gonna put on a lot of work. Uh, next up we have Frank of the Seismitoad. Um, this is a physically defensive seismitoad this week uh, to switch into Victini. Um, I'm just praying it doesn't have energy ball because obviously a kind of a mix set will kind of fucking blow me out of the water. But if it's mixed, um, it does mean obviously it may not be choice scarfed or I know maybe AV flame charge, something crazy like that. Um, it's less of a problem to deal with. I feel like if it was choice scarf, then it would be choice banded. Um, at least if it's choice banded, I can get that rocky helmet chip on it and set up rocks as well and kind of whittle it down that way. Um, I've got power up on there for the Jellicent, obviously. I did kind of want toxic, but I was like, you know what? I think damage is more important than toxic in it. If I can kind of, uh, you know, catch it off guard and get a big chunk of damage off before I die. Uh, that's going to be really useful for me. Um, scored Earthquake rocks. Um, scored obviously on there for burns. Um, EQ on there for the likes of Coco and, and Nido Queen. 
Um, and just overall, honestly, EQ is really good against Matt. Um, honestly, ground coverage is really, really strong. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of chucked that on there. Um, but yeah, it's kind of uh, forced to be physically defensive this week. I'm not sure what these are on here for. Maybe like a uninvested Nido Queen. Like if it was bulky, I took two Earth Powers or something crazy like that. I honestly, I don't quite remember, but I, all I do know is that this is obviously brought for Victini and also to uh, switch into kind of uh, Coco if he doesn't have Grass Knot, which I am expecting him to have because otherwise, how is he touching this, you know? Um, and then lastly, we have Choice Scarf since, you know, um, I wasn't quite sure about this set, to be honest. I did kind of want to bring it banded because otherwise it kind of lacked the power, but I kind of needed a choice. If I wasn't going to bring Ditto, I kind of needed a Choice Scarf in case he was Dragon Dance Kimoro or, uh, there's something else on his team. Oh, I, well, to be honest, I just needed something to outspeed Coco as well in case he was, I don't know, Choice Scarf Coco for... I did some crazy reason. Um, oh no, sorry, it's Choice Car Victini. I also wanted to outspeed, um, which is why since I, I decided to bring Choice Car since you know this week. Um, Tail Slap, Knock Off, Triple Axel, and U Turn. Um, honestly, it was kind of a toss up between Triple Axel and Play Rough, but I thought in the end Triple Axel was kind of better against his team because it does hit the Nido Queen and it hits the Corva Knight um, for neutral damage. Um, so I thought. I'll have Triple Axel over Play Rough, um, which may come back to bite me, but we'll see. Um, so that is the team this week going into week one of the EPBA. Uh, let's jump right into the battle and see how we do. Okay, so right off the bat, you're going to be seeing a showdown replay. Now, unfortunately, uh, Matt and I really didn't uh, have a good time with LAN this week, which is such a shame because it would have been my first uh, ever Wi-Fi battle. Um, in this generation, um, so it's a it's a shame that we ended up playing on Showdown in the end. But you know, it is what it is. Um, it's just one of those things. But we we tried for nearly four hours to connect um, on land play, and it just it just didn't work out for us, unfortunately. So we did end up playing on Showdown for week one, um, which is a big shame. Um, the biggest thing that I noticed immediately is he didn't bring Victini, he brought a Thievul, um, which makes me panic somewhat because I did not prepare for Thievul at all, um, so I kind of got that in the back of my mind going into this. Um, so as you can see he brought the Thievul, Jellison, Obstagoon, Victini, Nido Queen, and Kamoe. Um, I noticed he didn't bring the Corviknight which is really good for me, um, I mean Slowking is going to be putting in a lot of work this game. Um, Thievul is kind of an issue, but uh, I don't know, we'll see. Um, I decided to lead with Tyranitar here because, to be honest, uh, if he leads with Nido Queen to get up his rocks, I can set up a DD on that and, you know, smack it with an Ice Punch. Um, and if he leads with Coco, you know, I can get up an Earthquake and hopefully get some big damage off on it turn one. Um, so that's what I'm going to lead with here. I'm going to lead with the Tyranitar, and he does lead with the Coco, which is nice. Um, we're going to see if he's Volt Switch or U-Turn on the turn one, which is really good. He is going to go for the U-Turn um, and go straight out into his Kamoro. Um, I'm going to Dragon Dance turn one because I have Balls of Steel, apparently. Um, I do have the Truffleberry, um, but unfortunately, because I have taken that U-Turn chip damage, um, I will not be living any kind of uh, fighting move from this guy. Um, unless, uh, you know, he was Focus Blast. Um, so I was kind of praying that he was like a special variant or like a defensive variant and maybe I can, uh, maybe I can live one. Um, so I'm just going to go for Ice Punch here, get a big chunk of damage off. Uh, unfortunately, he reveals that he is Weakness Policy and he has the Drain Punch. Um, so right off the bat, that's not great for me. Um, it also means that my Tyranitar, my Dark Resist is dead. Turn 2 with a Seaball in the back and an Obstagoon in the back. Um, so honestly, this this could have gone a lot better for me. Um, if I got the Freezer, that would have been huge. Uh, but this is a problem. Also, if he had DD'd here, I think I straight up just would have lost. Um, so Tyranitar goes down turn 2 and I bring in the Furomosa here, not wanting to fuck around with this thing. It's a huge threat to my team, I'm clicking Ice Beam um, and he lets me take that which is really good for me. Um, so Kamoa goes down turn 3, big, big threat to my team gone. Um, and here I didn't want to reveal the fact that I wasn't Choice Scarfed 
or choiced in some way. So I did hard switch out into my slow king here, kind of using it as a pivot. Um, again, I didn't want to kind of reveal that information to him uh, too early on in the game. Um, so I do preserve my Fremosa here and go straight out into my Slow King. Um, he goes to the Willow here, which is interesting. I was kind of expecting the Shadow Ball. Um, so Willow actually works out really well for me. Um, he's actually going to hard switch into his Obstagoon, which is really nice for me. Um, but actually, um, I tricked off a Choice Scarf onto me, which isn't great. But it does mean, uh, you know, two things. Um, one, he now has nothing to outspeed my Fremos or my Simsino, which is fantastic for me. Um, two, he's going to be taking a lot of damage from Black Sludge from Sandstorm. Um, so this is both good and bad for me. If I can get rid of this Choice Scarf later, um, Slow King's going to be in a really good position for the rest of his team. Um, so honestly, that was kind of best case scenario there. Um, and if he stayed in with the Jellicent, then that would have been really nice as well. Um, so we get getting rid of the Sing's Choice Scarf is really good for me. Um, obviously I have no business staying in here. I'm going to swap out and preserve my Slow King. Going to go out into the Zapdos. As he reveals the Throat Chop, um, and we do get really lucky with the Static, immediately we get static on this Obstacoon. So this Obstacoon is crippled to all hell. Um, and we're just going to stay in and go for the U-turn. I did kind of expect him to swap out here, I won't lie. Um, uh, so I went for the U-turn trying to get the initiative, but he does end up staying in in the end. Um, and I'm going to U-turn out into my Seismitoad, kind of take this opportunity to get Stealth Rocks up. As he reveals his own switcheroo, um, which made me chuckle. Um, I could not mention that. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm pausing this a lot because I feel like uh, I don't want to rush through my commentary, you know, and kind of give explanations as to kind of why I um, made plays when I did and stuff. Um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a weird one post coming showdown. Um, so yeah, I take this opportunity to set up rocks, um, as I'm not really going to have the opportunity. Maybe if I can come in on the Edo Queen later on, um, but I really want to limit um, kind of Jealous and Switch Ins and, and Coco as well. If Coco isn't boots, um, then it's going to limit Coco Switch Ins and kind of uh, its utility as a pivot this game. Um, so getting rock clubs is quite important here, in my opinion. Um, he's going to go for the double edge, which is going to do a fuckload of damage to me and him. Um, but I'm going to take it out with an Earthquake. Um, Seismite just hanging on at 8%. Um, he's going to come in with Tapu Koko here and he reveals his boots. Um, which is both good and bad for me. Um, obviously it's kind of annoying because he's not going to be taking that chip. But it also means that he's not a life orb so he's going to be hitting a lot less hard. Um, also he's got the electric terrain up for me which is fantastic. So Fermorosa can be doing things with that. Um... So he's going to take down my Seismitoad and then you turn out on my Slow King. Um, I always go Slow King here. Um, Framrosa wouldn't have killed with Drill Run. Um, I didn't know if he was max HP or not, so I had to get chip damage on this Coco before I could bring in uh, Framrosa and kill it. Um, so that's why I didn't go Framrosa there. I don't have poison coverage. I, d I do have poison coverage on this. What the fuck am I talking about? Um, I think I go for Sludge Bomb here. I'm not 100% sure. I'll be completely honest. Um, so Matt's going to U-turn out and go into his Nido Queen. I think I go for the Sludge Bomb. No, I do not. I go for the trick. So um, I trick the Choice Scarf back onto the Nido Queen and I get Black Sludge in return. So that's worked out really nicely for me. Um... And here, I do think he's going to go for the Earth Power, so I do believe I go out into Zapdos, or do I? I think because I can live any one hit from this Nido Queen, I do stay in and Slide Shock. I think that is what I do, actually. It's been a while since I played this game. Yes, that is what I do. Um, he does end up critting me. Uh, thankfully, he doesn't take me out. Um, and because I want to get my regen boost, I am going to go out into my Zapdos, make the safe play. He predicts this really nicely and goes out into his Tapu Koko. Um, but I'm actually just going to hard switch out into my Slow King, um, not wanting to take that damage. And he's going to reveal the... <laughs> okay, so this is why he reveals the Thievul with the Electric Seed. Um, this obviously gets the Unburden Boost, and I'm in a whole world of problems right now. Um, my play here is to kind of let this die, to be honest. Uh, I don't really have any other play. Um, to be honest, Slow King has done its job this game. It's 
um, it's crippled the Obstagoon and it's uh, crippled the Nido Queen. Um, you know, Slow King's done a lot for me, and at this point, I don't see it. You know, kind of. I've got things for Tapu Koko at this point, so I'm thinking, you know, I kind of just let it go down here. Uh, Matt goes for the nasty plot, and I'm thinking, shit, this is really not good for me. Um, I go for the sludge bomb, hoping for the poison. Unfortunately, I don't get it. Um, and he is kind of forced to attack here because if I did crit him or uh, did get the poison, then that just, you know, he didn't want to get greedy basically. So his play was kind of dark, pulls me there. Um, so I did get off that damage before I died, which is really good. Um, now, my play here is to go into Sinsino and hope to God that Scarf outspeeds. Um, here's the moment of truth. We outspeed him. Thank fuck for that, because if I didn't outspeed that evil, we would have lost it in there. Um, unfortunately, because of the defense boost, he is going to uh, live that U-turn. So I'm going to U-turn out into my Zapdos, sack it off, and then come back in with my Sinsino on the following turn and get off another U-turn to kill it. Um, I was debating between U-turn and um, knockoff here, but I was like, I, I don't think knockoff will kill. He's at plus one defense, he doesn't have an item. U-turn is always my play and it'll bring in Coco anyway, which is kind of what I don't really want. Um, so he goes to Jellicent here, and I think I U-turn, um, kind of getting off that chip, uh, which is fine. Um, I believe that's what I do. Yeah, so I'm going to go for the U-turn, go off that little bit of damage, go into Sinsino. As he goes for the Scald, um, he does crit me. Uh, Fortunately, he doesn't get a burn, which is really nice for me. Um, I'm just going to go for the knockoff. I think it's my best play against uh, what he's got left. If he does bring in a Nido Queen, it does kill it, thankfully. Um, but if he does happen to go into Coco, it'll knock off its boots. It means it can't um, pivot rounds um, and kind of, I guess, stall me out. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I go for the knockoff here. Um, as he sacks his Nido Queen, it's a nice play. Uh, and he brings in the Coco. Now, I don't have any kind of reason to swap out here. Uh, yeah, knockoff's not going to do anything for me. Uh, it's not going to do a lot of damage, but it it's the chip I need on it to kill uh, with Draw on it at this range, if he's not max HP. Um, so we're going to stay in and let Sinsino die here as we go for the knockoff. It's going to do a nice 16%, and he's going to take me out with the Thunderbolt. Um, and now we come in and we hope and we pray that Feramosa has the right speed, the right everything to take on the last two months. He's got Feramosa, he, I've got Feramosa, he's got Tapu Koko and Jellicent left. It's just Feramosa against the world at this point. I'm going to come in, click draw on, and I'm going to get a crit. That's going to take out his Tapu Koko, that is a huge turn for me. Um, I'm not sure that that crit mattered. If he was max HP, then that was a roll. Um, if he didn't have HP investment, then Drill Run always killed. Um, but I, I don't know what Tapu Koko set Matt was. Um, if he did end up being at max HP, then I am terribly sorry, because that crit did matter. Um, but that crit is honestly going to solidify the game. I get the speed boost, which is inconsequential. Um, and Shockwave doing a clean 61%. I pray here that he doesn't get a crit or he doesn't have Shadow Ball. Because I think Shadow Ball is a roll to kill me. Because I'm minus for death nature. Um, but no, he reveals Scald. He doesn't get the burn. And we are going to pick up a 1-0 victory week 1 against Dr. Slacking. Um, honestly, this was a really fun game to play. I was terrified of his team. Um, Fermosa picking up three kills at the end there. What a fantastic game. Um, but that crit um, was huge for me, I won't deny that. Um, but uh, again, I don't know if it mattered or not, depending on his uh, his spread and stuff like that. Um, but overall, a really enjoyable game. Um, a fun one to start off the season with, for sure. Um, I honestly was very surprised that he brought Electric Terrain. I was half expecting him to bring um, uh, telepathy, mainly because um, his switch into Zapdos 
weren't amazing. Like, obviously, he did have the Nido Queen to negate the terrain, but um, his the rest of his team kind of struggled to switch into a, a boosted Thunderbolt. So I was kind of surprised to see Electric Terrain, uh, but I certainly was not complaining because obviously it, it did win me the game in the end. Um, but yeah, just a fantastic battle, really enjoyable, um, and I'm really excited to see uh, Matt uh, how he kind of. Um, commentates his side I'm really interested to see his stats and um, his kind of thought process behind um, his plays and stuff but yeah really important battle um, I'm really happy that we started the season with a victory um, honestly I came into this game not expecting to win at all um, and especially T-Tar going down as early as it did I um, you know I didn't expect to win this game at all but you know I proved myself wrong uh, we came away with a 1-0 victory and in the end that's all that matters so GG's to Matt, thank you so much for being my week 1 opponent, it was really fun um, good luck for the rest of the season and thank you guys so much for watching, um, hopefully next week we'll come back with another victory um, I think we face a fan team next week, I'm not 100% sure, I think we play Shadow Stitch um, I can't remember his team name but there's definitely a sound court in there so Tangle is going to have a lot of fun um, <laughs> but yeah, um, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next week, I guess. Bye.